chapter 55 babu la yurad man sa'ala billah whoever asks with the name of allah is not to be rejected whoever asks with the name of allah uh, he should not be uh, rejected or is not to be rejected and he mentions here the hadith of ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma qal uh, qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam man sa'ala billah fa'tu wa man istaada billah fa'idhu wa man da'akum fa'ajibu wa man sana alaykum ma'rufan fakafi'u fa in lam tajidu ma tukafi'una fad'u lah hatta turaw annakum qad kafa'tum the prophet sallallahu said if anyone makes a request in allah's name give it to him if anyone seeks refuge by allah's name give him refuge if anyone gives you an invitation accept it and if anyone does you a kindness, recompense him. But if you have not the means to do so, pray for him until you feel that you have compensated him. Reported by Abu Dawood and Nasa'i. And this is a sound hadith. First, the relationship uh, between this hadith and the title and the tawheed, that uh, exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if somebody asks you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you don't give it to him as if you are having this deficiency in the exaltation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart, you didn't give it to him because of him, you give it to him because he mentioned the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of the respect and the, and the, and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person would not be uh, يعني, greedy as a result of that because it might يعني, negate his deficiency or cause a deficiency in his tawheed. Of course, in the deen of Islam, uh, tricks or uh, deceiving others is not permissible. Because if somebody knows that and he comes to you and he becomes a professional beggar and abuses this and he says, by Allah, give me. And if you give him, you're going to cause harm and you're going to help him to be uh, deceiving of others. This is not what is meant, of course. Right? But in general, a person, if he's asked, we're not supposed to check in what's in the hearts of the people. If he's asked you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why the ulama, they say, Someone, a beggar, for example, asking you, and if you know that, or you might have doubts that maybe he's using this and abusing the matter here, we can give him something that nobody would care about much uh, if he takes it or not. Something little, but at least you gave him something. Um, so this is, and again, the hadith shows the, the great mannerism that a Muslim has. Uh, we, we get now to understand with regarding to the Tawheed, man sa'ala billah fa'atu. Give him if he asks by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he seek refuge in Allah, then protect him because the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned. Whoever call you, invite you, accept his invitation. And again, this is not unconditional as long as there's no haram involved, of course. If somebody invites you for something haram, you do not accept that. You don't say the Prophet ﷺ said accept his invitation. The whole religion of Islam is all together. It's not one evidence against another. Uh, there is major general rules that have to be observed and there is no way the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to under be undermined. Person has to accept the invitation if there's no sins involved. If he's able to do that, if it not, does not contradict with other, other rights in his life, but in general, a person should uh, accept the invitation and whoever do something good for you, فكافئو. This is the goodness of the Muslim, that you reward them as a result of he did in, uh, doing a favor for you, that you reward them. He should do the favor only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim should not do the favor because he's expecting people to reward him. He do that only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He does not seek the reward of the people. And the people out of their goodness, if somebody do a favor to them, they need to uh, reward him. And the reward, if they don't find anything to reward him with, then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَدْعُوا له. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him, to the extent of which, till you see that you had uh, compensated him. Not just the dua that with the tongue and there's nothing to do with the heart, not sincere dua. No, definitely a sincere dua that a person has this care and this nasiha and the pureness towards the believers when they do something good to him he always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them that's why for example the best people that benefit us are the people of knowledge after the messengers and that's why we we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them for the the people of knowledge and so on and those who would do anything that is of a physical benefit to the person so uh, these are the, the, the benefits definitely from the hadith. And this is one of the practices that should be present among the Muslims. Now. There are some uh, group of people who are uh, 
who don't uh, do any job and they say we are biased and they just want people to keep, keep giving them money so that they can run their household. Hmm. Uh, of course, definitely, if a person is using this, uh, thinking that he wants money so that he can worship and be busy with worship, he is not to be helped with this. But if he's seeking knowledge of, for example, a person can, people can help him because of the benefit that would affect them. Uh, but the issue of helping is one thing and begging is another thing. People, when they uh, leave uh, seeking means and they just beg from people, this is something that the Prophet ﷺ warned and he said, that whoever do that and he is of no need, he would come on the Day of Judgment without no flesh on his face on the Day of Judgment. So it is not permissible unless a person is in famine, is about to die, to take this as a profession is something that is not permissible. No, but they say that they are not asking people and it has become a trend. People who are keep, keep giving them money. They're not asking them, so what? They don't ask people, but people still give them money and they don't do any job. They say we are just uh, uh, living our life in the path of Allah SWT. Oh. Don't do that any job, so it's the responsibility of the community to feed us. Oh. Oh. No, if, if if they want to do that, then they should uh, be honest and truthful, and depends on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and see what's going to happen to them, and not to take anything from people. Meaning, if they want to be depending on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they need to take the means, and not to be depending on people and taking their wealth and so on thinking that this is something good for them. No, definitely, the Prophet ﷺ and the companions of the Alarm, the early generations of Islam, they took the means of this world. Uh, but if, if the community, they see they need somebody to benefit them, to teach them Qur'an, for example, right? And if a person, the one that is teaching the Qur'an, would work day and night, he won't be able to have the time to teach them the Qur'an. So if they would give him the free time by giving him something, uh, this is definitely permissible. Uh, if they don't find anything else, there's no alternative but this. But for people to take this upon themselves and they, they see that the community should feed them so that they would yani, uh, do acts of worship or whatever there is, there's definitely this is not permissible like that. That's all I can say.